Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. You're watching SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante for our sixth year live in Las Vegas at HP Discover. We've done HP Discover Barcelona, HP Discover We've done all the HP. We're going to HP Discover London coming up next. So this is our ninth Discover, right? Six in the US. We did Frankfurt, yeah. and we did two in Barcelona. Yeah. yeah, so we're on the ground. We've been embedded with HP. We've been watching the story unfold and watching HP transform, as they say they're transforming. So this is our opening segment, our editorial analysis of HP. Dave, let's go, let's drill down. We're going to have to talk to all the HP folks here. The backstage pass, the Cube is like the backstage pass. We have all kinds of interactive, engaging experiences. Obviously, you can watch the video. You go to our new site, hpdiscover.social, the new digital experience for all the socials, ungated content, or it's free. See the trending hashtags, find influencers. Go to crowdchat.net, there's a ton of crowd chats going on. You get the influencers. HP does a great job with influence, and they're all in rooms getting briefed, but they're sharing that on Twitter, and that we're capturing that as there as well. Um, but Dave, HP, big story. Meg Whitman's going to give her keynote later today. There's some things that we expect to see. There's some things we've heard through the grapevine. Bottom line is HP's got this transformation message, hybrid infrastructure, digital enterprise, data-driven, workplace productivity experience, all perfect messaging. I got to give props to, to Jim Jackson, Jason Newton, did a great job on that. Um, now, this idea economy, they have to execute. I mean, that's all great, but everyone wants to talk about the split. Meg Whitman will address the split from what we hear. Um, HP, you know, kind of cringes when you talk about the split. It's like, it's like, you know, people here kind of just want to get over it, kind of like get on with business. The enterprise group is solid, and the split is going to give them focus. So, you know, there's a lot of people trashing the split, a lot of people saying um, it's not good, it's good, and so there's mixed balance on that, mm -hmm. Dave. So what's your thoughts? I mean, well, the split, HP, their financial performance, they're not the, they're not the, the, the stellar Wall Street uh, shining star of, of success at this point in terms of their well, financial. Although, well, although they've been on a slow and steady you know, progression uh, over the last couple of years, so you know, the turnaround is happening. I think as it relates to the split, John, the split is inevitable. You know, anytime you have to transition with a company like that and split, it's, it's, it's disruptive, but it had to happen. I mean, on the one hand, you got HP selling personal systems and printers and ink, and then they turn around and sell super domes. I mean, it's just the synergies in those business, businesses are not yeah, you buy the split. extensive. You, the split is necessary and inevitable. It has yeah. to happen. They gave it the they're, college try. They're two different models, and you know, this whole notion, and Dell talks about this a lot, is Dell will say, we're now the only end-to-end -end company. I, I don't know if people really care. I, I really don't think they do. I think it's more important to have focus, in my opinion, because that's where you find winners in these markets. So the split makes a lot of sense to me. They're different business models, different gross margin models. I see HP Inc., John, as the, the company with steady cash flow. It's kind of the dividend play. I see HP Enterprise as being positioned as the growth play. Now the challenge for HP has been, the company, I've said this many, many times, as you know, the company has to shrink to grow. And it's, it's been shrinking, and there are certain aspects of the company that are growing the big challenge that HP now has, like everybody else, is, is currency headwinds, right? Because the, the, the appreciated dollar, and HP gets a double whammy because its big competitors in printing are in Japan. So not only is HP transferring uh, revenue back into its appreciated currency, but their main competitors in Japan in printing are selling at a lower price. Other products don't have that challenge. So that's a double whammy for HP, but they'll get through that. I think if you look at the businesses, my feeling, John, is HP's you know, first of all, its server business is doing great because ISS had a huge quarter. It grew about 17% in constant currency. Uh, the storage business is kind of flat to down in constant currency. I'm not really thrilled about that. Software's the big thing to me, John. HP software business has to grow faster. They've got a shiny, bright toy in Vertica, but they need more of those. They've, and the challenge HP has right now is the old stuff is not growing, uh, is, uh, the new stuff is not growing fast enough to offset the decline in the old stuff and it, eventually that will change. Now, there's a lot of signs of encouragement. I, I always say 3PAR is the gift that keeps on giving. And if you look at what HP has done with 3PAR with all flash arrays, 
I'm very excited about that. It's the first example, certainly in storage, that I can say where HP has organically innovated. They basically said, okay, we're going to invest and create this all flash array and we're going to come out with a leading product and they've done that. So that's a good example. I'd like to see more of that. You know, we're going to hear more about the machine. Martin Fink's always talking about the machine. Um, that's really futures. I'd like to see more of that. You certainly see that with Gen 9 in servers. I want to see more in software. Yeah. I want to hear more about Haven. We have uh, Colin Mahoney coming on. But So that's my sort of high level assessment, John. I'd be interested in what your take is. You're in Silicon Valley. You used to work at HP. What do you think? Man, I've been covering HP for a long time. I've been close to HP since 1988. I mean, I've seen everything. I know all about, I mean, I know everything about HP there is to know in terms of strategies they've been through, products that they have, in terms of the analysts out there, probably the closest perspective um, uh, than others out there. And, and I was critical of HP, Dave. You remember the cube, I go back, we, we, have the, we have the archives, you can't hide the archives. You go back five years, I, I was on the cube saying, Meg, do not split into two. At that time, it was a much different Well, at the time you were saying, don't spin off, no. don't sell PCs. The, per, the personal system yeah. division. This well, is different. Well, I know, no, hold on. But, but it's in essence, it's the, it's the, it's but kind of They were talking about divert, uh, div, uh, diversifying from the, divesting yeah. the asset. That's not what they're doing. I yet. know, but still, my point, I want to make a point here. My point okay, is, that, my, point. My, point is <laughs> my point is, at that time, Android was barely getting off the ground. <clears throat> Apple was in its massive ramp up growth. HP is a lot like Apple, it's more of a, kind of a mellower version, but everyone's loyal to HP. HP's got great loyalty, they got great loyal customers, they got, they don't have the fan base that say Apple has because it's more of a consumer product, but HP had the elements at that time to execute what I call the big bang theory, pull it all together, a be like Apple, put it all together, have the value chains and the supply chains work together. So I think that ship has sailed. So I think over the and, the, and the market has changed. So I think the split is good for HP, like you, for all the reasons you outlined. Okay, the, I, I'm for the split. And the enterprise business is competitive because the cloud changes the game. So back in my argument for keeping them together, Android and mobile was just building. So I would say, okay, that's that. Okay, that's not going to happen. You're not going to see that kind of trajectory. A split's happening. They still own the assets. Again, you got the cash cow in the printer business, different kind of management style, and then you got the high-end cloud business. I believe that the cloud business is going to be absolutely massive. I believe that the customers are not buying the cloud today. As much as people say they're buying Hadoop and the cloud and these kinds of new technologies, we know from our research, Dave, that they're not buying, they're waiting. Things are developing. It's early, early days. It's the first inning, top of the first inning in that transformation. So HP, at this point, has time to execute, one. Two, Amazon has shown with their cloud billions of dollars in revenue and storage as well, that it's an integrated world. So you heard Jason Newton talking about this idea economy that Meg's going to talk about, and I think HP is building a platform in a whole new way. And having a platform means they have to enable people to be successful. And this idea economy is about enablement. So I think the strategy's good, it's going to come down to execution. So you know, to me, what I'm looking for is, can they go into new markets with their powerful channel partners? The channel is a weapon for them. If they can get that right, with this platformizing, uh, replatforming HP, then it's not a storage decision and a server decision or a you know application monitoring system decision or a security decision. It's an it HP decision with the option to have a little bit of Dell in there or somebody else, multi-vendor. So to me, that platform is critical. Software will drive it. That's the hybrid. The messaging hangs together, and the works and the workplace productivity point is about hey APIs, notifications. We now live in a world where apps are driving the show. Apps are driving the bus, Dave. That's the world we live in. So if HP's messaging translates to focusing on workflows in the enterprise, what the consumer is doing in the enterprise, with the apps as the focus, application-centric, and then building around that, that's a platform. I like that. Well, so I, I think, and I like the, the messaging, talking more about so-called business outcomes than just products. Uh, Jason Newton said in previous years, you'd, you'd have folks stand up at you know, HP Discovery to be a product-centric uh, pitch. And so I much prefer to talk about business outcomes, digital transformation, things like that. But having said that, at the end of the day, HP's still a product company and they need hot products and they've got a number of hot products. I want to hear more. You mentioned cloud. 
Um, I want to hear, hear more about uh, Helion. Uh, the la latest quarterly conference call barely got a mention. Vertica, I don't even think got a mention. Um, converged infrastructure is a huge opportunity for HP. While HP was sort of first in naming, you know, co coining that phrase, converged infrastructure, it's a little bit behind. It's probably, my guess, John, is it's converged infrastructure business is probably, I don't know, 300 million, right? That's a multi-billion dollar business opportunity that HP uh, can go for. And you mentioned the channel. It's got to align the channel there. Uh, I think, you know, you mentioned Flash. Moonshot, didn't hear much about Moonshot. We were at the original Moonshot announcement. So I want to hear more about, about those types of, of products. So these hot products ultimately are going to power HP's profits. I'm, I, I've been saying, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged about HP because it still throws off cash. It made, it's making more acquisitions. It, it announced uh, an acquisition of Aruba, big wireless play, and some other acquisitions. So that's good, they're starting to be acquisitive again where they couldn't post the autonomy acquisition. Now they can. I want to see, once they split, you've got to deal with the dis-synergies. There's probably four or five hundred million dollars of dis-synergies, right? When companies merge, they always talk about synergies. Well, mm -hmm. HP's splitting, so there's going to be dis-synergies there. So by 2017, they got to get back to making that accretive. They also still have to take cost out of this business. I think Meg's got to take two or three billion more out of this business in the next two or three years. So they've got some challenges there, but they are funding R&D more so uh, than in the past under the Herd era. So I want to see that R&D come out with productive products. That's key. And I want to see the company throw off more cash and be more profitable. It throws off a lot of cash. I mean, it probably did 760 million in free cash flow in the quarter, but that's a company about one quarter the size of EMC and it's throwing off about the same amount of cash. So HP has the potential to throw off much, much more cash than that, John, and I think it will over time. So Dave, I got to ask you your perspective because I read an article that's been trending in the, in the um, echo chamber of the Twitter sphere, um, criticizing HP, who's an analyst, um, basically saying all analysts think HP's uh, a train wreck, and they're basically saying Meg's no Michael Dell, Meg is no Steve Jobs, basically comparing Meg Whitman just to Michael Dell, and that's and basically trashing HP. Um, What's your take on that? I mean, I mean, I mean uh, you talking about the Rob Enderley article? Or? Rob Enderley article. Was it sour grapes? Was that like? Uh, I mean, it was really a really a negative tone, and he kind of made a statement that most other my peers agree, HP is beyond repair. What's yeah, he was take? basically. I, uh, I, what, I, what's I, your I read the article. I don't agree I with it. I don't agree at all. I mean, I think that. You know, I think the analysis that you give is the right is right on. It comes down to the customer. I talk to a lot of HP customers. HP customers like HP, and if your customers like like you and want you to win, they're going to stick by you. They're going to be loyal. Why are HP customers loyal? Because you know HP is an honorable company. They they're honest. They do what they say they're going to do. Um, they 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 deliver. Now, from a company performance standpoint, it's easy. It's it's easy to criticize you know HP. Um, so I think a lot of that. I don't know if it's sour grapes or not, Rob Enderley chose not to come here. I don't see how you can say, well, I've decided not to come here and then you know, to be so critical. So I'd like to see Rob have a little bit more of an open mind. I, as I said, John, this is a company that has had to grow to shrink. They made, you know, Carly's acquisition of Compaq, or acqu the acquisition of EDS, the acquisition of Autonomy. Give it the cards I mean, that Meg was dealt, well, you know, we're challenging, and I think you've said the this before. Was the she kind of took one. She kind of took one for the Silicon Valley team, and so, what would one expect to do? Mega said it's going to be a five-year turnaround. It's going to take some time. Yeah. This split, I think, is the right thing to do. And yeah. you look at the stock price. You know, I'll, since Meg's taken over, the stock price has done pretty well, and that's the, to me, the ultimate yeah. measure. I, I like Meg Whitman. I got to say, she's she, as far as I'm concerned, I like her style. Um, do I agree with all of her moves? No, not all of them. If I was running the show, I'd be doing things a little differently, but I'm not the CEO of HP. I have to drive in every day and be on conference calls around the world <coughs> and deal with all the, all the hassle. But, but HP's got to move faster, John. No, no, right? but here's I mean, my that's... point. Here's my point on the Engerling article. I think, th I think that was just sour grapes on his part, but this, you can't compare Meg Whitman and Michael Dell. They're different people, okay? You can't compare Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs came in with a clean sheet of paper and the company was almost bankrupt. HP is a good business. I mean, what's the cash numbers they're throwing? Off. Yeah, I mean, they'll, throw not, off, they'll throw I mean, off three and a like, half to four I mean, billion in free cash flow so this year. And so to say they're doomed. I'd is, like to see more, but to, that's pretty good. To say they're doomed is ridiculous. Okay? Well, no, it's, abs it's it, an absurd it, statement. You're, it, you're right it, about guy that. Should, HP is not doomed, you know, that's absurd. I mean, the guy, yeah. I mean, basically probably doesn't do any business with HP, and he wanted to throw a haymaker out there. That doesn't fly on the social web anymore, you know, and so we, we'll, we call you out, and we'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe on a debate. Happy to do that anytime, anywhere. But 
That's not the point. My point is, what's the reality? And the reality is, they have a management team, they got to add more talent. I do agree with people when they say, you need more domain expertise. I think Meg hasn't found her team yet. I think this, some, we see it in the cloud. We saw some movement there. You see um, some solid management team, Antonio Neri, a great in the enterprise group, solid as a rock, has the bedrock of the old HP. It's a, it's a massive turnaround. So you can't compare styles of management with Michael Dell and Meg Whitman. First of all, two different people. Michael Dell Starr is the founder of Dell. He was a majority shareholder. He took it private. If Meg had that, I'm sure there would be a whole different world. But okay, but so, so break it down. So why HP? So you think about a lot of very competitive, why HP? Global company, strong services organization, solid products, uh, great reputation, and delivers on its promises. And, and if it makes a mistake, it'll correct those mistakes. So that's why customers are loyal to HP. Would you rather buy a single best of breed product from take, for instance, pure storage. Let's say they got a great, great product. Or if you have a huge, you know, hundred million dollar project, you're putting in SAP, you're upgrading, you're doing HANA, you're doing all this big data stuff. Do you want a single throat to choke? Or do you want to be the integrator? A lot of customers, oh no, especially HP's large customers, a want a single point of contact with right. an HP or an IBM you know, or, or an Oracle, or increasingly like a EMC Federation. Those companies have advantages, John, and I have said it, the rich keep getting richer in this business. Yeah, and, I, and, and if you look at what Oracle's doing, you look at what IBM's doing, HP's smart to go down that same kind of path, which is stay the course, they have muscle. Business got, outcomes. <coughs> no, and they have muscle, right? So HP has leverage advantage. They have a channel that's the largest in the world, okay? Oracle has strengths, they play to those strengths. So HP is a big, company, huge inertia of silos to break down. I mean, it's not, you can't just transform that overnight. No, so. they're not without challenges. <laughs> they're losing the supply chain leverage when they split up like that. Yeah. Uh, they've got dis synergies yeah. they've got to deal with. There's, you know, there's issues. Um, but generally speaking, as, as we said at the top of this segment, it's the right thing to do. I'm bullish on HP, I've always have been. I've been a big fan of HP. Um, because I know what they have in the arsenal. They have feet on the street. They're a lot like IBM. Great culture. Okay, a little bit sideways over the years from the transformation. Again, the autonomy was a big, big thing to choke down and, and digest. I mean, they've got to get that out of their system. They've now integrated autonomy across, as we pointed out in the queue a couple of years ago, that, that is almost complete. You almost see that sunsetting from the brand, but in terms of like, the integration, you see in big data messaging, the digital enterprise, the storage piece, the converged infrastructure. I mean, they got everything kind of teed up. I think the UX piece with workplace productivity, that's a question mark for me. I don't know what they got there. I'm going to look for this that. this is an undervalued company. The, the future for HP is to deliver higher value to shareholders. There's no question in my mind about that. I mean, they're a company that's basically trading at 60 cents, 50 cents on the revenue dollar. Yeah. Right? And so, there's a lot of upside there. Yeah, I want to see solidarity amongst the management team of HP. This is my, my KPIs for uh, key, key performance indicators mm -hmm. for HP. Meg Whitman staying on course and not being um, uh, agitated by the haters. And certainly there's a lot of people who want to see her come down. A competition and some, some, as we see analysts, stay the course. Get the management team solid, unified. Unify, what's our phrase, Dave? Unify, integrate, and grow. That is HP's core philosophy right now. If I, if I see them doing that, I'm bullish on HP. They have the tech, they got HP Labs. They have assets. Play to the assets. Put a, put a team on the field, let's see some execution performance. I'm not worried about the cloud piece. A lot of people are like cloud this, cloud that. Cloud is early game and HP's got tech they could bring to the I think that's a product market fit thing that have to, they have to get right. Well, they'll get their fair share of cloud is really the point there. But they are late, John, you got to admit, they're late to cloud. Well, no, we'll have Bobby Pat. I've talked to every one in the cloud group. Here's the deal. HP doesn't want to compete head to head with Amazon, but they want to compete head to head with Amazon. Well, exactly, that's the problem. Right. That is the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> However, you start looking at segmentation. How do you how does HP stop Amazon? If you look at Amazon say they're a 10 billion dollar uh, business unit. That's about a 2 to 3 billion dollar storage business. <laughs> Hello? HP, I mean, so everyone's recognizing Amazon. So HP has to decide, do they say we're not Amazon, or they recognize the fact that Amazon's going to roll into their territory? Well, the new style of IT is services. Uh, yeah. so infrastructure yeah, but, is a but service. But HP has, a, have to, has to have a competitive strategy, and I think that's why the cloud group is kind of circulating. They haven't found their formula yet, and I think they will. Well, I think they will too, as I said. I think HP will get its fair share of cloud, but it's, it's, it's late to the game. But 
but the game is still early. Okay, Dave, we got to wrap here. What do you look for here at HP Discover? Quick sound bite. What's your early indications from the vibe here? And we'll do a wrap, obviously, every I think, day. I think three things. One is Meg is going to talk about the new organization. She's got to get that out of the way, and she's got to convince customers here that all is good, and this is a good thing. Two is this sort of new messaging around solutions, around business outcomes, uh, around those four pillars. And then three is, it's still a product company. They're going to they're gonna tout some cool products, and those are the three things I'm looking for. I'm looking for innovation, I'm looking for the channel partner leverage, I'm looking for those under the covers, under the hood details to the, to the four pillars. There are four pillars, good messaging, I want to look under the hood, I want to see what the engine of innovation looks like, and then see the team that will execute it. And we'll be doing that all week here, live on theCUBE in Las Vegas, again, HP Discover 2015. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, stay with us, it's theCUBE. We've got more, all interviews coming in today. Stay, we'll be right back after this short break.